Hello, it's Chelsea from Paper Rock to Your Studio. Welcome to another video hop about doing an ATC a day in June. That is our challenge from the Art Joy Sharing Art Community on Facebook. And we are also talking about surfaces. And um, today the video hop is about making an artist trading card using handmade paper, whatever that means to you. Um, if you are going to make an artist trading card, which is a three and a half by two and a half inch card, that is the size of a playing card, a baseball card, or a Pokemon card. Um, these little art bits are fun and easy to do. If you're making it with handmade paper, you might have one that's stiff enough to cut down into card size. But if you don't, you can just uh, put your first layer down on a stiffer piece of card that's already cut to size. And then uh, use your handmade papers on top of that. Um, what I'm using is literally handmade paper and some of these I bought some of them I I made myself a long time ago <laughs> and the, um, Making paper is easy. You just have to have a few things You know tools and what I like about it is that you can it, it's floofy you can tear the paper using a little bit of water and get that deckled edge and I just love the way that organic deckled edge looks. So that's kind of what I'm doing with mine. Um, leaving them in that organic shape and then I'm going to use some other papers that I cut into straight lines for uh, contrast in the composition. But I'm not like making a thing. I'm making just a abstract type of an idea. I like to glue the handmade paper down with uh, fluid matte medium because I like the way it soaks through the paper and gets it you know gets every little bit of it stuck down but you could you could use just um, you know some other kind of glue if you want to uh, most of this I glued with the matte medium these larger pieces so that's what I'm doing so to make your own handmade paper like this you can use um, scrap paper like uh, ads and things that you've received in the mail or newspapers and all you need to do is have a blender. I would recommend getting one at a charity shop or at um, a yard sale that you're just only going to use for crafting and not, you know, use it for your food. Tear up the paper, put some water in there, maybe add in some uh, lint from your dryer, you know, that stuff you clean off the screen. It makes the paper more soft. And blend that up into uh, a wet paper pulp. You can also add things in like a little bit of potpourri or something if you want a little bit of petals or stuff from your garden as long as it's small enough to embed itself into the pulp. Then you need a frame like a wooden frame of some sort that has some screen stapled on it. I've made it out of uh, the plastic screen you get to replace um, the screens on your windows or your doors. I've used that before because it's flexible. Get it really tight, staple it on, and then that becomes like a pan, like when you're panning for gold, and you, you pour your paper pulp, your wet paper pulp that's wet with a lot of water in it, into a flat dish, dish pan or something, and then you put that frame in, and you kind of swoosh it back and forth to make it even, and then you pull it straight up, let all the water drain out, and then you put that outside to dry and when it's dry you can pull that sheet of paper off the screen and reuse it again. It's a fun thing to do with your kids over the summer. It dries really quick out in the sun so uh, you might want to give that a try. And these papers, some of them that's how they were made and others were purchased. They're like mulberry paper and things like that. Uh, other options for your handmade paper. Um, that could be your mark making tissue that you might have made for collage or a jolly printed piece that you've printed because you printed it, right? You hand made it. So if you would prefer some of those options instead of the actual, like what I think of as handmade paper is this um, organic looking paper like this. So for contrast here, I have a little strip of this gold paper. It came in a pack with other handmade papers in it. It's like crinkled gold paper. And then these other pieces that I cut into very even rectangles that I'm putting on for contrast, those were created uh, by putting some, t crinkling up some tissue paper, putting re-inker on it 
so that it's all nice and colored and varied and then putting some uh, crystal effects or one of those type of a glues on acetate and then laying the tissue paper over it keeping it wrinkly pressing it down and letting it dry so that's another handmade paper option for you made that stuff a long time ago another option might be marbled paper just whatever kind of paper that you made you made it yourself right or it was made by somebody <laughs> like you purchased a handmade paper so I'm all I'm doing here is collage and as I'm putting the pieces on I'm trying to keep most of them really oddly organic shaped with floofy edges then with the contrast of the hard edges on some of them uh, the smaller pieces I'm gluing down with art glitter glue because it has a nice little pointy tip and as I'm creating it, I'm not really thinking it's it it re represents anything. I was just thinking kind of abstract colors, blues with a little bit of yellow um, and white type colors. But then after I looked at it, I decided it kind of looked like a, a night sky uh, with clouds and maybe a few little, you know, just a night sky. It's, as you see the close-ups at the end, you'll see what this paper has a lot of little bits and pieces in it. So... It just reminded me of that. So I ended up using a sticker that had something to do with the night sky. What does it say? Till morning light. That's what it says. <laughs> um, I tried, I decided to try with this one piece, and this is definitely one that I've made. I can see the screen marks on it. And the way that I got the color was I used uh, scraps, like little tiny scraps back when I was card making of colored cardstock and of course it lightens up in color when you add it to the other scrap papers or whatever a little bit but you can get colored paper that way also you could use like writ dye if you wanted to in your blend but I did punch it I decided to try punching it and I, I punched out a piece and then to finish it off I added some stick on gems um, I think I used gold colored, yellowy gold colored stick on gems for fun. That's always fun on artist trading cards. I hope you're enjoying our artist trading card a day challenge this month from Art Joy Showing. And I hope that you will hop through the rest of the links below the video to see what other creators have done with the idea of handmade paper. I have no idea what they did. I haven't seen their videos, so I'll be watching along with you. Also remember to give all of us some thumbs up, uh, leave us a comment or a question, subscribe to our channels. Um, you can join my channel membership if you'd like to for $1.99 a month for exclusive content on the 15th of every month. So there I've got my gems stuck on and now I think it's, I've almost got them stuck on. It's time to look for some words to put on. The pack of words that I used for this is from Ranger Tim Holtz Distress Products, and it's got like snippets of words from books. Like um, sometimes, sometimes people like to do found poetry. It's kind of that idea. You look at a page and you see like a section of a sentence that just says something to you. That's basically what they are. It's just that uh, Tim Holtz has made them into a sticker pack. So. That's always nice. I do glue down the stickers because stickers notoriously don't stay stuck. <laughs> they say they're sticky, but they're not, especially over stuff like handmade paper, which has all that fluffy fiber in it. So that is it for this one. I think this is prompt number 27 on our prompt sheet, which you can find at Art Joy of Sharing Art Community on Facebook. That's it for me. Thanks. Bye-bye.